when a former Russian spy, Sergei Skripal, and his daughter Yulia were found seriously ill on a bench in Salisbury, it was quickly established that the deadly Novichok nerve agent was involved and a clean-up operation began. A specialist military unit, the Joint Chemical, Biological, Radiological and Nuclear Task Force, deals with the most toxic substances known to man. The 120-strong force is half RAF and half Army, and it was their job to clear and decontaminate the areas affected. We got a phone call in mid to late March to work into the second phase of the operation, which was to assist Salisbury in its decontamination and clean-up process. First place it was to try and track down where any contamination could be, and that would be changing on a daily basis. You think about the spread of a contamination, it's a bit like a spread of a cold. If I touch you, you pass it on, and et cetera, et cetera, and we had to think about that. This never-before-seen body cam footage shows the CBRN task force at work. Each person wearing two pairs of gloves and changing them every time they touch a new object to avoid cross-contamination. The team had to follow the movements of those affected by the nerve agent and everyone who'd been in contact with them, particularly the emergency services. The largest initial site that we dealt with was Bornhill Police Station. Um, that included a removal of around 50 office chairs, 1,500 carpet tiles, which all required packaging in uh, waste containers. And then we carried out detailed decontamination of various surfaces, hard surfaces in the properties. In Gillingham in Dorset, the pickup truck used to remove Sergei Skripal's car was itself wrapped and removed for testing. We were shocked. Um, it's not something that you expect to happen in the UK. Some of the sites were really small sites and if you can imagine trying to get a large vehicle or a number of large vehicles into such a small space, we had to be on top of our game. Three months into the clean-up, two unconnected local people, Dawn Sturgis and Charlie Rowley, fell ill and it became clear that the Novichok contamination had spread much more widely than first thought. Dawn later died in hospital and nearby Amesbury, where Charlie lived, became a new area of investigation. We thought that we were coming to the end of um, our time here and then when that happened, we had to then go full circle and start all the way from the beginning. So it wasn't just then the clean-up side of it again. It, we had to start from the recovery phase, so there was more vehicles that were contaminated, so we had to start um, removing them again. It was now July, and the heat was having an impact on those working in heavy protective clothing. If you think back to when the incident started in early March, there was snow in the ground in Salisbury, cold days, when people were quite glad of putting on a bit of CBR and equipment. However, later on, we got to the, the, some of the peaks in the summer where the temperatures were far in excess of the routine. And what we had to do from headquarters is monitor that temperature and individual's temperature on an hourly basis. And as soon as we believe those temperatures rose, we would actually give the cease operational aspects because we completely understand that an individual must be at the top of their game and on top of their concentration when they're in such an environment. The CBRN task force aren't used to working on UK soil amongst a civilian population and had to adapt the way they worked. The most challenging part is uh, in order to maintain safety is to adapt our uh, techniques and procedures and come up with novel working methods to maintain safety and to remediate and decontaminate the sites associated with an invasion attack. If we were in an operational environment on a battlefield where tempo is key, then that's the time to take risk you don't take risk in Salisbury. So everything we had to do was very scientifically proven, very methodical to ensure that we could deliver the highest degree of confidence to the UK and the people of Salisbury that when we left, it was fit to return to use. Working behind the scenes, often out of sight of the public, the task force did the meticulous and dangerous work necessary to make Salisbury and Amesbury safe. Mm -hmm.